by his 10 and knows who's on the field. The reach advantage goes to Ngannou with 83 and 78, but I don't think it's really going to matter. Uh, this is why I love these stats. 71% KO, TKO win rate for Francis and 90% for Rosenstrike. Subs, 29 to over, uh, to Ngannou, 0 to Rosenstrikes. Decisions, uh, win 0 for Ngannou. And Rosenstrike was 10% of his wins have been decisions. Another fact here, takedown attacks, 0-0. Zero, zero. Defense now, 71% for Ngannou, 75% for Rosenstrike. So it's going to show you now that no one, none of these... Sorry. None of these are going for a takedown. None of these are going to try and put people that. Uh, none of these, they're not going for takedowns. If they do go for takedowns, I'll be very, very shocked. But this is just going to be an all out absolute war. Two heavyweights. This could last. This could be a fight that could last any second. Any two, five, four, three, two, one. Anything. The first punch, the last punch. Like, this is how dangerous the heavyweight division is between now. It's getting a lot of people now with just this one punch knockout power, and these two have it. It's like Thor's hammer. You get hit by any of these punches, and you're going down. You're seeing lights out. So, I'm going to do 10 wins by knockout, 4 wins by sub. Last 5 fights, 3 wins, 2 losses, no draws. His last wins against Junior Dos Santos by KO slash TKO in round 1. His last loss was against Derek Lewis by decision. Uh, decision. And everyone thought that was going to be. And absolutely like this one and won't war on war, but it didn't live up to the hype. A lot of people dub it as one of the worst fights in heavyweight division. I'm not dub I not never dub anything like that because like I said, if I got in there with heavyweight I'd be knocked out to the moon and back. But a lot of the you MMA community say that, that that was one of the most boringest fights ever. Didn't live up to the hype. And Ganu, if you really want to another fight you want to look at back at and Ganu you don't want to look at Derek Lewis, right? but Alistair Overing, the uppercut from hell, was unbelievable. It was just one of the best uppercut knockouts you'll ever see in UFC history. And that's what I mean. It's the hype. That get hyped up for this fight. Get hyped up for these people by going back and watching these old fights that they had. And over uh, Rosenstrike, he has now went by a knockout. One win by decision. He's on a... F- he hasn't lost yet, so his last five fights he's all won. His last win was against o- Uberim. No, o- o- Overeem, not Uberim, he was back in the day. Overeem by KO slash TKO. He's undefeated, so he, I think, Rosenstein would be a bit more hesitant, a bit more uh, what, he's going to, what he's going to do because he doesn't, a lot of fighters, a lot of people like that when they're in the. Uh, fight game they like that they love having that O in the record they like being a bit safe about it but Nganu is just dangerous and so is Rosenstrike so I me personally I think if Nganu is going to win just from UFC experience being in there with the champ, champion um, having that loss and having that Derek Lewis fight I think now that he's had all this experience and he's been be- he's beaten nearly every UFC legend Junior Dos Santos, Cain Velasquez, U- Overeem, um, Andre Alaski, and Rochery's bet U- Overeem and Alaski as well. But I'm going with Ngana just because of experience. But I could be wrong. Everyone can be wrong. It's just my honest opinion here. Then we're going to the two main events of the evening. And wow, this is two title fights. So we're going to go with. The champion, and this is for the Bantamweight Championship of the World, and it's Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz. Henry Cejudo with a 15-2-0. Dominic Cruz, 22, 22 wins, 2-0. and Reached 64 to Henry Cejudo, 68 Dominic Cruz. This is going to be two things, rather. Henry Cejudo is just going to keep trying to take Cruz down, keep him down, keep him down, keep him down. Or Cruz is just going to... Move, 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 jab, cross, hook, kick, kick, uh, take a takedown, pretend take a takedown, move, jab, tip, dodge, dodge, dodge. His f- like, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna break down Henry first. So he has he's on a five eight win streak, six wins by knockout, seven wins by decision, zero sub wins. His last win was a KO slash TKO against Marias to win the bantamweight tie because TJ Dudashaw got stripped over circumstances. Uh, 
you can look it all up yourself. I just too much to get into it. Uh, then, so even because he got he's, he won the title and there's no champion, he bet TJ Dillashaw for his title with the flyweight title in 2019 by Chaos as Tico in round one. So Cejudo was a double champ, but he relinquished the featherweight the featherweight title. But no one's won that yet because two people are supposed to fight. One of the fighters didn't make weight. They still did the fight. And the fella, if you don't make weight in a title fight, the person who didn't make weight can't win the title. And he won the title. So he won, so he couldn't win the title. So now it's still vacated. He's most famous for his gold medal win in the Olympic Games. He also be one of the, I think, kings of the, of the flyweight division in Demetrius Johnson back in 2008 by decision. But he's fought DJ twice and the first time he lost in, in a very bad way. And he lost by in the first round with KOC with low the knees. He got in the, DJ got him in the clinch and just kept kneeing him and kneeing him and kneeing him. And I just showed you how much the Henry Hugo has grown since then. So he lost the... Uh, so he lost to Benavidez, he lost to uh, DJ, then he went and lost to Benavidez, and then he just went on an absolute tangent and became a double champion, beating the GOAT of featherweight divisions. And now he's fighting another GOAT of the bantamweight division in Dominic Cruz. And Dominic Cruz has a, he is, he's been out again for a very, very long with very, very bad injuries, which is such a tragedy, tragedy to happen to him. He could have been, could become one, one of the greatest of all times. Even he become, became a double champion. So he has 7 wins by TKO, KO wins, 1 sub win, 14 decisions. Last 5 fights was 4 wins, 1 loss, no draws. His last win was Uriah Faber back in 2016. So he hasn't competed in a very long time. Uh, and that was a trilogy fight to put the rivalry to bed because it was 2-1. And I think that was... I, that's the thing with a lot of these fights, like... One apiece, yeah, great, unbelievable. But once it comes to that trilogy, I think that's the way you put it to bed, and that's it when the trilogy is over. Uh, well, his last loss was against Cody Garbrandt back in 2016 by decision, and I, I just don't know what happened to that fight. I think Cruz is such an intelligent person, and he was. I just don't couldn't believe the way the way Garbrandt was tra- tra- trash talking him. It wasn't like great trash talking. I think that's what confused him. It's like, how the hell is he? What, what's he on about? It kind of confused him a bit. But Garen Pono, unbelievable show. He didn't take the bait like a lot of people do with Dominic. He likes to bait people in so he can move around, duck, dodge, dip, like the dodgeball bloody instructions. Uh, but injuries, injuries has just played a very, very big part of him in the UFC and his MMA career, which is, I think is a tragedy. Like, I think if he... He wasn't, if he didn't have all these injuries, he'd probably have a way better record. He'd probably be a double champion. He could have went up to 145 and maybe fought Jose Aldo or fought um, Max Holloway or something like that and won another title. You never know because injuries and it's so, I just feel so bad. Like, it just makes me feel, but he came out of retirement before the fight TJ Dillashaw for the title and beat him after a very long layoff. And now he's doing it again where, he, so he's, He's trying to get back back into the UFC. He had a fight booked and then he got injured again. And he's been on the um, broadcast team for the UFC. And he's probably one of the best analysts in the game. No one can really out-talk him in that. He's such a knowledgeable person. And everything that makes martial arts from MM, any MMA. You'd probably send him an MMA clip of some fight. He would break it down. Unbelievable. Like, so many great people like that in the game now that are doing it. Um... So, it's going to be a tough, tough, tough pick for being out for so long, for being out of the game. But has Henry ever fought? Like, Dominic Cruz is like this Rubik's Cube sometimes. Yeah, he's been solved before against Ryan Faber and um, Cody Garbrandt, sorry. Oh, I just like Dominic Cruz, really, really do like him. That's what I mean. I'm a fan. Like, I'm not doing this as, like, who I think going, like, looking clip after clip after clip. Oh, this is, this is, I like Dominic Cruz. 
that's just the way I'm going to pick it. I think his movement, his footwork, maybe have the better Cejudo. But I don't know, it could be wrong. But the odds are for Henry Cejudo, it's 4 to 9. And for Dominic Cruz, it's 13 to 8. Next, oh, uh, this is probably one of the best fights. Should have been Ferguson could be for the title. But that fell out. It was supposed to be in Brooklyn, and that fell out. So now we're here in Florida for this fight. Tony Ferguson ranked number one in the lightweight division. Versus Justin Gage is ranked number four, 26 and three for Tony Ferguson, 21 and two for Gaethje. Uh, six, 76.5 reach to a 70 reach to Gaethje. Tony Ferguson, 50% of his wins are KO slash TKO, 31% are subs. Gaethje, 86% KO slash TKO, and he is 5% in the subs. Now, Tony Ferguson, 12 wins straight, 12 wins, 13 by KO. And then he has another wins is eight by submission. His last wins against Cerrone by KO slash TK in round two. He won the interim title back in 2017 against Kevin Lee by submission in round three. So he could, technically he could become the first double interim champion ever. Like. How funny and how weird does that sound? The first double interim champion. I don't. I stand never like. Yes, him and when he was interim champ, him and uh, Yoke should have fought. He fell on some wires and destroyed his whole knee, and he took the title away from. him, But he never lost. He never, like it was such a. He's, him and Khabib have tr- six times this fight has tried to happen. Six times. Like how many times are we want to they got UFC? I want to try and book this fight. You're going to have to like wrap them in bubble wrap or keep them in one room and not get them injured for the whole time and try and get the fight. But he didn't get the fight. He, he's still waiting for that Khabib fight. Khabib was still waiting for that Tony Ferguson fight. And, like six times. That's crazy. And one eyes are anywhere else around there. And the funny thing is, though, they both fought on the same card back in UFC 229, Khabib versus McGregor. Like, imagine, like, you could have just said, all right, McGregor, you wait here. We're going to try and get this fight started. And let's see this one. This this is what we were trying to make. You can get the winner, no problem. But it didn't happen. Like It's so weird like that. They both fought on the same card on the same night, but not against each other. And then when you try and get them on the main event, no, nothing happens. You can't get it done. It's up. Oh, that's just... It's weird. It's like the MMA gods never... It's like they want to have two lightweight champions. That's basically what they're trying to say. Like, and Ferguson hasn't lost since 2012 by Michael Johnson. So, like, that's like, imagine not losing a fight, a single fight since 2012, and being on tw- and winning 12 fights since then in a row. Like, that is, and you're, you're not champion. That is just what interim champion, the asterisks have to come out there. Like, that's incredible. That's just, like, I don't understand it. That's absolutely ridiculous how that. Can happen like how can a champion be tw- 12 fight win streak and haven't lost in 2012 and not be the champion like that is just or not even went for the actual real belt like no interim none of that sh- that just champion lightweight champion fight oh i just oh this new mma fight isn't it right so justin gaethje three fight win streak 18 wins by tko slash ko Three first round finishes, one sub win, two decision wins. Last last five fights, three wins, two losses, no draws. Last one against Cerrone by KO slash TKO round one. Last loss was against Dustin Poirier by KO slash TKO round four. And that was an unbelievable fight. Uh, if you ever seen, Justin Gage is one of these people. Every single one of his fights is an absolute war an absolute war and it's absolutely incredible and it's, he's everyone's favorite fire it's just an unbelievable fire he used to be i think the man michael johnson fight was like where he was really was just absolutely wreck absolutely just head down go 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 he's kind of i think now he's being more it's oh how would you say it? he's being more like He's still being reckless, but it's calculated recklessness. Like, it's not just him putting the head down, just 
swinging the arms left right left it's 